वर्णिवे शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्री हरि कृष्ण महाराज जय सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामीनारायण और पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी एंड ऑल ऑफ डिटी जय स्वामीनारायण एवरी डे एटलीस्ट ट्वाइस अ डे we are eating food there are many different types of food we are eating every day and from the food we are not getting only nutrition but while eating we have many different varieties of taste from the food now from childhood to till today we have eaten so many things many kinds of varieties of food we have consumed but ever we have thinking over the food means ingredients which spice used in the food never but today let we shortly and briefly we discuss about ingredients and specially the varieties of spices there are many spices used to make indian food we have salt turmeric powder chili powder sugar lemon juice and so many other spices we know salt has salty taste pepper has hot sugar is always sweet and lemon is always sour and so on but when you eat any food particular food and which these all ingredients means all spices are mixed in appropriate proportion but which is the tastiest spice when we add salt we have salty taste if we eat chili means pepper we have hot sugar ta- uh, sweet but which is the tastiest spice or tastiest thing in the same way there are many thing in devotion some like salt some like sugar some like lemon but which is the tastiest no doubt the appropriate and exact proportion of all the mixture means all the ingredients make thing tasty but in the devotion there is one thing which give us the tastiest taste means the taste which like to everyone there are many things in devotion but without feeling without love for god 
whether we perform shravan kirtan smaran or any kinds of devotion that is all the mechanism but not devotion if we want to offer our heart our sentiment means our feelings for god then god himself accept our devotion or think whatever we want to give him in this way in conclusion we have get one thing that is feelings for god or affection for god which is the tastiest spice in food item now let we see what exactly the example of such kind of affection or love for god because while we perform any kinds of devotional activities and if we have no such feelings for god then that is merely activities but not a devotion and without feelings without love for god there is no meaning of our work that is only labor work so if we convert our daily routine if we convert our religious activity into devotion we have to love for god in our heart there are many devotees at the time of sri ji maharaj as well as now today there are so many devotees even at present time if they desire to offer something to god god himself asks from the devotee or bhagwan himself accept whatever offerings the devotee offer in the vachanamrit bhagwan himself also says that without such feeling whether person perform physical puja or mental worship means mansi puja both are inferior let's say sri ji maharaj says if a person lovingly performs puja of god with hair raising sentiments and an emotion filled voice then regardless of whether he performs puja physically or performs mansi puja both are superior conversely if he performs puja mechanically without feeling love or excitement and without showing emotion in his voice then regardless of whether he performs puja of god physically or performs mansi puja of god both are inferior so this is what the importance of our emotion means our feelings for god once upon a time at the time of sri ji maharaj there was one brahmin devotee named kasi ram in vartal financially he was very poor but devotionally he was very rich he always desired to offer food to bhagwan but due to his poverty he had no such good delicious dishes means good food to offer bhagwan in this situation in this controversial situation he passes his days in lamentation because he cannot serve bhagwan even though he has desire one day his wife asked him about his wishes he disclosed his heart that i have one desire to offer and sow my own food to bhagwan himself but 
as we know we are poor we have no such no any good or rich food to offer bhagwan so how can we fulfill our desire his wife says no doubt we are poor but as we have love for god we have feeling to offer something to god so you just don't worry one day bhagwan himself come to our home and ask our own food but kasiram says we are not rich if bhagwan ask food from us what will we give him as always we it we are eating ordinary food but bhagwan is not an ordinary person so we have to give give him something more something rich food but we have no such food but his wife says bhagwan always accept our emotion our feelings our love he had no cons- he had no concern with whether a person is rich or poor the food is rich or ordinary in this way they had passed some days and one day sri ji maharaj himself came to their house with mulchi brahmachari and says kasiram that i am very hungry so if you have something please give me kasiram became very excited because he cannot believe that in my poor house bhagwan himself how is how it is possible and he immediately went to his kitchen and asked his wife what is ready food for bhagwan his wife had made ordinary food as the routine nothing but a rotlo and dad but as they have devotion bhagwan himself accept their low in the form of rotlo and dad and bhagwan himself eat all the foods in this way there are many devotees at the time of sri ji maharaj who always have desire to offer something to god and god himself asks the food from those devotees another devotee in the village of ahalpur jagjivan said was a staunch devotee of that village there was a small temple in the village and jagjivan said has a vow to always offer the thar in the temple both times but one day he was not in the town he was outside from the village and so he instructed his wife that today i am not in in our village i want to go outside so you send our son with the thar to offer it to bhagwan in the temple now at the time at the appropriate time of offering food to bhagwan at lunch time a small boy went to the temple with thar means food in the plate he had put the complete this in front of bhagwan and he also sat down before the bhagwan and pray to god 
हे महाराज हे भगवान प्लीज ईट आई हैव समथिंग समथिंग ऑर्डिनरी फूड टू ऑफर यू एंड इन द प्लेट देर इज नथिंग बट ऑनली खिचड़ी एंड करी द बॉय सेट डाउन वाइल क्लोजिंग आईज एंड प्रे टू भगवान प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई offerings after a while after some time boy had opened his eyes but bhagwan was not eating at that time in our own perspective what is our own feeling what is our own behavior while we are offering thar to bhagwan in our home temple or in the main temple when we are offering thar we just put thar before the god or idol and we just pray to bhagwan bhagwan please start to eat and when 10 15 20 or 30 minutes pass we ask bhagwan bhagwan now i think you have eaten i think you have completed your lunch so now please wash your hand and drink some water and we offer water and just take the plate from before the uh from the bajor this is what our mechanism it is not our devotion but this boy he had devotion in his heart so when from the idol bhagwan he cannot see that bhagwan can eat but he continue his praying bhagwan please ask bhagwan please eat my offerings so but while bhagwan himself witness his devotion in this way bhagwan himself manifest from the idol and eat all the plates means eat all the foods khichdi and kadi and bhagwan has bhagwan had given him prasad of biranj instead of khichdi and kadi and bhagwan had filled the plate with biranj after this incident by come back to home and narrate what had happened in the temple to his mother mother has gathered all the devotees of the village and she had also narrated all the incidents and offer the prasad of biran to all of the devotees and at evening when jagjivan said came to house his wife and his children his child had narrated the incidents of the temple and offered him prasad of biranj in this way while listening such kind of incidents we should fill our heart with feelings for god we should create or develop love for god so that one day god himself also accept our offerings accept our own food this is what the stories of the time of sri ji maharaj but we have a question that even present time is there any duty yes in the 1994 our puja guru ji with the sant mandal came to africa in the nairobi temple 
in the presence of 2000 devotees guruji thakur ji guruji hari krishna maharaj drank one and a half gallon of milk all the devotees have witnessed these incidents guruji offer bowl of milk to thakur ji and thakur ji slowly at the time drinking the milk one bowl two bowl three bowl in this way one and a half gallon bhagwan himself accept that is not whether the thing is all the milk or any other sweet but it concern with devotion in the heart of devotee if we have created or developed the same kind of same intense love for god in our heart god also accept our own offerings our own food or whatever we want to offer him there are many incidents we have in this way but today i think this is enough for us to understand what is the concept the concept is to have a love for god in our heart not just mechanically offer anything to god and then just take out from god and then use it for our own self this is not our devotion but when our heart is filled with devotion if we have sensation to offer something to god god definitely accept whatever we offer now from today let we just try in our life to create such love for god and offer whatever we like to offer bhagwan definitely accept our own love our own devotion whether we have a rich thing to offer him rich gift to offer him or we have an ordinary things but if we have richness in our heart if we have richness in devotion bhagwan definitely accept our offering our devotion hari krishna maharaj ni je prabhu tav murati vinod kari palapan visare nahi jo visari jugal charan sol chinn jeh nazar samipe raho amari eh हरि कृष्ण महाराज ने जय गणेशाम महाराज ने जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान ने जय सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी आर लॉर्ड स्वामी नारायण पूज्यपाद गुरुजी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हंबल जय स्वामी नारायण अ स्ट्रांग फीलिंग और वांटिंग टू हैव समथिंग or wishing for something to happen this is the very definition of the word desire in the dictionary now there's two types of desires we can say positive and negative in the world people who desire for materialistic pleasures or materialistic objects this is in the form of negative desires on the other hand for religious purposes we desire for prasad of santo we desire for the darshan of santo bhagwan we desire for any kind of god related or saint related activity this is in the positive direction for a desire 
Now let's take a look at an example of both. Suppose you're in high school and you're walking down the hallway, going to your next class from period to period. You have a 10 minute intermission in between to get to your next class. As you're walking down the hallway, on the right side, you see a group of, you can say, not your friends, but your students or your classmates talking amongst themselves. They're talking about how they have a wish to throw a party. They're talking about the new Samsung Galaxy S5, the phone. They're talking about how they want or they desire to hang out with each other and do things that are not appropriate for a religious person to do. Out of that, you observe and since you're a devotee, since you go to Mandir, since you have some kind of association with saints, you can write there and tell that they have some desires besides engaging in God-related activities. So due to that, their desire is negative, or their desire is in the negative direction. Now, this is on the one side. You're experiencing this, you're experiencing this at your school, and when you go to Mandir or temple on Saturday or Sunday, you have other fellow devotees around your same age discussing how they have desires for meeting Guruji when he comes from India to here, or even have desire to do some kind of austerities in the, in the Chaturmas some kind of desires along this way. This is in the positive direction. Now, our topic for today is probably desire. But today I want to guide you in the correct direction so you can lead a spiritual life according to the great saint's wish. Today we're going to take a talk from Sadhguru Gunatilan Swami's Vato. Now, just a brief background. Sadguru Gunatitan Swami was a great saint among when Bhagwan Swamiran was on this earth in manifest human form. He was one of his elite saints out of the 500 Paramahansas. And Swami had a really, really great inclination of doing Kathavarta, spiritual discourses, among many, many devotees. He lived in the temple of Junagar, and there, for 40 years, he just talked constantly about the supremacy of Bhagwan, about the glory of Bhagwan, about how to destroy one's innate nature, about desiring for the right thing at the right time. Everything a true seeker needs in order to succeed, in order to go along forward in his path of liberation, this is what Swami talked about. So, in his Vat, in the second chapter, his 94th talk, that's what we're going to listen to, that's what we're going to analyze today. So first I'm going to read the talk, and then through that, Swami is going to explain to us what his inner wishes are. So Swami is sitting there in the Sabha Mandap, in the assembly, there's many, many saints and devotees, they're listening to him. And he asks, What sort of desire for moksha should one have? Moksha meaning liberation. Not just liberating. There's many forms of liberation, you can say. Suppose a person is in jail, and a person gets out of jail. That is also a form of liberation. Suppose a person is trapped in a cave, and he becomes saved, and someone takes him out of the cave. That's also a form of liberation. Suppose one is drowning in the ocean, and one, sa one saves another person from drowning in the ocean. You can say that person liberated that person from death. But here in the spiritual stance, liberation is on a bigger scale. Liberation is on the scale of getting out of this cycle of life and death 
and becoming beyond this body and going to Akshardham. Meaning, going from a low place to a high place in the form of spirituality I'm talking about is moksha or liberation. So Swami is asking, what sort of intense desire for liberation should one have? Meaning, just like how if one does some kind of crime and has to go to jail for, let's say, 15 years, maybe the first two or three years, one says, this is not so bad. But slowly, slowly, it starts to build up on that person. And due to that, the person becomes so crazy that after only five or six years, the person has an intense desire to get out, has an intense desire to become liberated from jail. Now that kind of desire cannot be explained by just mere words. It has to be experienced. But Swami is teaching us how can we experience or how can we understand how to develop some kind of desire. But first and foremost, Swami is explaining what kind of desire should we have for liberation? Well, it said that Swami says that it should be like the poor people who came from Bhimnath Mandir during the famine of 1823 to beg for food. They would plead for food and were pushed around, yet they did not go anywhere. This is the type of inti intense desire one should have for moksha. Now, in the year of 1823, in Gujarat, India, there was a great famine. Many, many people died because of lack of food, lack of water, lack of resources, you can say. And due to that, many, many people had to beg for food. And at that time, there was a, a mandir, a temple, called the Bhimnath Mandir, located in Gujarat. And they were a little wealthy. So what they did was they had a little desire to give food, give alms to the people there. Now, what had happened was, when they were operating the alms house in the temple, the temple was located on a hilltop, a high hilltop. And there was a river at the bank of the hilltop. It's called the Nilka River. So all these poor people, all these needy people, they would climb the whole hilltop, go to the temple, and there where the person was giving out the alms would give out a little bit of wheat porridge in probably you can say how much ever fits in two hands and would send that person off. Now, at times, the person knew that this was not enough for his family, so he would come back for some more. Also, there was a lot of commotion because there were so many, many people, so many people begging for food at that time, that the person giving out the alms w was disturbed. So, at times, what the person would do, or what the other helpers would do, would shove those poor people down because they weren't in a single form of line. It was such an inconvenience for the person giving the alms, the person giving the wheat porridge, that it was very difficult. So the people would push them and they would roll down, making a cascade, just like how dominoes, if they're lined up, and if you just drop one, all of them fall in synchronous. In the same way, all these people fell just like dominoes, and they would fall into the river, Nilka. Right after they fall, and they recover, they would stand up, climb back that hill, hilltop, and again, beg for food like nothing had happened. Now Swami is giving an example off of this, or Swami is giving His principle off of this example, by saying, and first asking, what kind of desire should one have for moksha. Well, Swami is pointing out, one should have the desire like the poor people in the famine of 1829 
at Bhimnath Mandir. Just like how they were pushed, yet they fell, they rolled back, they fell all the way down to the river, they climbed back up and again begged for food. In the same way, when one is talking about liberation, when one is talking about moksha, when one is talking about becoming liberated from this body and going to Akshudham, then no matter what one has to do, no matter how many obstacles one may encounter, obstacles in the form of maya, illusion, obstacles in the form of even saints saying harsh words, to eradicate one's innate nature. One should not feel at all hurt by these words or by these obstacles. One should merely think that my aim is to reach Bhagwan, my aim is to attain moksha, so this is what I want to do. So by remembering this example of the Bhimnath Mandir famine of 1829, Swami is giving us a great example that one should have such kind of intense desire. Desire in the form where it would never be extinguished, just like how underwater volcanoes, they erupt and they're active, yet there's so much water, so much tons of water around the volcano, even you can say inside of the volcano because it's underwater, yet the heat of the volcano is so hot that the water cannot extinguish that lava. In the same way, one's desire to attain Bhagwan should be so firm that nothing, no obstacles or anything can obstruct one's aim from being fulfilled. Now if we look during Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, Many, many of you have heard this story and I've given examples of this story. But since it's such a perfect match and it matches our example of how Swami is talking about desire, all of you have heard about the queen of Udaipur, Jamkuba. Jamkuba had such an intense desire to please and to attain and to have the darshan of Bhagwan that let's go back in time that she was the queen of Udaipur and at one time she was in her palace. She was sitting there and she heard Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan many, many times from afar. There was Brahmins cleaning their clothes in a nearby river and chanting Swami Narayan. So she went there right away and she asked, whose name is this? The Brahmins explained that this is the Supreme Lord Himself has manifested in Gandhara and he is here to give moksha to everyone, to, to give everyone, to liberate all the souls. So she said, I want to meet Bhagwan Swami Aran. I have an intense yearning. They, the Brahmins explained more and more of Bhagwan Swami Aran's glory and Jamkukba's intense, uh, Jamkukba's desire to meet Bhagwan increased more and more. So she decided to run away. But obviously, a queen cannot run away from her post because her king has bound her there. So she had to sneak away. So at one night, one midnight, she made a rope from sadis, which are Indian garments, and from the balcony, she made a rope and threw it down. She climbed down and she ran out into the mist. In the morning, the king found out that her queen had ran away. So he sent many of his soldiers on horseback. Now the queen, she was obviously on barefoot, so she could hear the gallops of the horses in distance. So the, she decided to hide. Now, Jamkubai, let's put her on the side for one second. A queen, imagine what her status is, what kind of things she does. Let's just think, the duties of a queen. She does not have to clean dishes. She does not have to clean her own clothes. She, 
She has nothing to do but to sit on the throne next to the king and support the king. That's it. And this queen, Jamkuba, she saw a dead carcass, a dead camel's carcass, and she hid inside of that carcass for three long days. The soldiers crossed this carcass many times, but never even thought for a second that Jamkubai would be hiding in that carcass because they knew that she was a queen. They knew that a queen would never hide in such a disturbing and foul-smelling carcass. But they did not know her intense desire to reach, to attain, to have the darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So, after looking tirelessly, they went away. Jamkuba did not hear any gallops, so she came out of the carcass after three days without any food, water, nothing. She took a bath in a nearby river, and again, she headed for a direction in Gadara. She did not know her direction, she did not know the way, but just by the faith of Bhagwan, she was just walking away from the king, away from her old town, her old city of Udaipur. So as she was walking, she encountered a Brahman. Now, this was no ordinary Brahman. Bhagwan Swami Narayan knew that Jamkuba was on her journey towards coming towards him. But he also knew that Jamkuba did not had not eaten any food and was very, very weak physically. So Bhagwan took the form of a Brahman and came there and had some sweets in his box, in his tin box. So first the Brahman introduced the queen and asked, Where are you going, dear queen? The queen said, I'm going to Gadara, but I, I don't know the way. The Brahman said, in the form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, that I do know the way. I shall take you there. Come. So, while they're walking and engaging in conversation, the Brahman slowly, slowly found out that she had not eaten. So, the Brahman offered the sweets to the queen. Now, the queen had explained to the Brahman that I have taken a vow that I will not eat anything or drink anything until I meet Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself in Gadara, after I reach Gadara. The Brahman insisted and his aura, his vibe was something different because obviously Bhagwan Swaminarayan had taken the form of that Brahman. So, the queen was enticed and slowly she took the food the sweets, and she drank the water and she ate the sweets. And then after some time, she had not sleeping, so she slept underneath a tree for some time. After she woke up, after a couple of hours, she did not see the Brahman, and she heard chanting of the Dun Swaminarayan again. Women were washing their clothes in the nearby river bank, and she was wondering, what, where am I? So she went to the women and asked, Where are we? The women said, We are in Garpur, Bhagwan Swamiran's village. She was astonished. But her desire had not been, you can say, quenched. So she asked, Please guide me towards where Bhagwan Swamiran is residing. And there... She went to Bhagwan Swami Narayan and she fell at Bhagwan Swami Narayan's feet. Tears were coming down her eyes. And she said, Bhagwan, I have met you. Now I do not ever want to let you go. I have given up everything for you. Bhagwan said, Do you know who I am? She said, Yes, of course, you are Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan revealed his identity in the form of the Brahman who encountered her in the middle of the forest. And she became even more pleased that my God had came to save me. And all her life, she remained a devotee of Bhagwan Swami and pleased Bhagwan Swami Narayan. But 
a queen and her desire. What did she do? This is what we're looking at. This is what we're focusing on. This is our perspective as of right now. Hiding in a carcass for three days, going without food or water until meeting Bhagwan Swamiran, leaving her kingdom behind for meeting Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now, we don't have to do any of these kinds of tasks. This is just beyond comprehension. We don't even have those kind of luxuries to abandon. But at least we should develop some kind of desire to do more bhajan, to do more bhakti, to go more to mandir, to engage with association with santos. This, our desire should increase. So, today's topic was desires. We looked in the negative perspective, we looked in the positive perspective. And according to Sadguru Gunatidan Swami's Vat, we understood what his inner, you can say, abhiprai, or what his inner wish for us to do was. And we found out that we should have intense yearning, intense desire to attain moksha. And this should be our ultimate and final goal. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Sri Pati Mishri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dharmatmadam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesvam Kamdam Karanam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Maje Hare Krishna Maharajani